chapter. Uh, starting at the 21st verse. And it's read. From that time forth, Jesus began to show his disciples how he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and to be killed and be raised again the third day. Then took uh, Peter, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee hence behind me, Satan. Sometimes, you know, people, uh, they, they, they think they're helping you, but they're hindering you. And when, especially when they're not of the will of God. And Jesus said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Now he recognized that wasn't another Peter talking. But that was Satan speaking through him. Amen, amen, amen. But thou art an offense unto me. For, the, for thou savest not the thing be of God, but those that, are, that be of men. Then Jesus said unto the disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. And whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. But what is a prophet? What is a prophet man? What is a prophet man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange of his soul? For the Son of Man come, shall come in his glory, and shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall uh, he. He shall reward every man according to his works. Bill, I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till, the son, till, till they see the Son of Man come in, in his kingdom. But my thought come from the 24th verse. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. And I want to talk about the great cost of self-denying. Amen. The great cost of self-denying. On last week, we gave you a few scriptures uh, to go home and read. And uh, Brother Michael, he reminded you during the announcement. As it was, first scripture was St. John, uh, the first chapter, verse 1 through 51. And the second was St. John, the 14th chapter, verse 1 through 31st verse. And the next scripture was Psalm number 1, verse 1 to 6. And the next uh, scripture was St. John again, the third chapter, verse 1 through the 21st. Uh, that's in order that you might read the Bible for yourself. How many of you read this past week? Amen. Did you put it on paper? I want you to turn that paper into me, just showing me that you have read those scriptures. And if you have, I want you to bring them to me during the offering period. It will help you to know what God wants you to do. For the Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, uh, the reward. Uh, the happiness of believers, his doctrines are holy, his precepts are binding, his histories are true, his decisions are immutable. He, he don't change, God doesn't change his mind, his scripture is unchangeable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It's the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, the Christian charter. Here the paradise is restored, heaven open, and the gates of hell disclosed. That if you read the Bible, that's what it contains. If you want to know how God thinks, read your Bible. It's for the Bible contains the mind of God. 
Amen. Let you know how God thinks. Amen. Amen. And it deals with the state of man, the way of salvation. It directs you into the way of salvation. Amen. That if you read those scriptures that we have given you, you'll find out how God thinks and what he thinks about you. Now, the scripture that I read this morning, Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me daily. Uh, that means in child of anyone who accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you got to first of all deny yourself. A amen. And, 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 and then take up your cross and follow Jesus. Uh, during the course of this action, Jesus was on his way up to Jerusalem. And, uh, and, and, and on his way up to, to Jerusalem, he stopped for a few moments and uh, he questioned his disciples and asked a question, said, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they began to answer Jesus and say, some say that you're Moses, some Elias, or, or, or John the Baptist, or one other of the prophets. He said, but whom do you say that I, the son of man, am? And Peter stood up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus turned to Peter and said, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto thee, but the spirit of my father. But thou upon this rock, he said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A a amen. And, and he, he was on the way up to Jerusalem, but before going to Jerusalem, he had to find out what did his disciples think about him. Because it was their job to carry the gospel after he leave here. He had said on one occasion, he said, great work have I done, but greater work than these shall you do, because I go to my father. Amen. Now, what I've started, I want you to, con to continue. Amen. Everything that I've started, I want you to continue. Great work have I done, but greater work than these shall you do. That means that's something for you to do now. It doesn't mean for you to come here and sit down on Sunday morning. Amen. 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 But if it, my mother say, every saved soul must save a soul. You're not to be satisfied with just yourself saying that you're saved. Amen. A Amen. But, but, but you, you must be about your father's business. If you say that you know God and that he is your father, then you must be about his business. You remember, don't you, when Jesus was 12 years old? And, uh, and, uh, and uh, his mother was looking for him. And she thought he had got lost from the crowd, but he knew where he was. And he knew what he was doing. And, and she, she, had, she had to leave the caravan. She was on the way back to Nazareth, but she had to leave the caravan and go back to Jerusalem to seek and to search for Jesus. And when she found him, she found him in the temple. Amen. Talking with uh, lawyers and doctors. And she asked him a question, son, why have you dealt with us in such manner? And his reply was, woman, know you not that I must be about my father's business? Amen. If you've been called of God, then you must be about his business. And therefore, Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. You cannot follow Jesus unless you deny yourself. Amen. How many of you are here today that say you're a follower of Jesus? Can I see your hand? Now, it's called for self-denial. It, it, it's, it's, somebody say it's a great call. Amen. To deny yourself. Uh, and, and the question is asked, are you willing to forget yourself? No, you're not. No, you're not. But you got to be willing to, to forget yourself in order to do the will of God. You got to lose yourself. You got, you got to deny your own interests. Amen. If you are uh, going to be a servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's called for self-denial. Not always doing what you want to do. Amen. Not, not always using all the time that you want, but you have to deny yourself a personal time 
and give God what we call quality time, not your leftover time. But you got to give him time that you want for yourself. Jesus said, if any man, that means regardless of what race, creed, or color, if any man will come out to me, let him first of all deny himself. Now, 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 you cannot deny yourself unless you commit it. It means to be a child of God is called for a committed life. You got to give your life to God. Commit your life to God. Submit your will to his will. You know what Jesus did on the way to Calvary? He committed his will. He submitted his will to God's will. He said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Most of us don't even think about God's will. It's what I want to do. It's how I think it should be done. But God has already laid out the plan of salvation. Amen. It's God's way or no way at all. It's called for self. If very few of you that are here today have denied yourself for, for the gospel's sake. You, in order to deny yourself, you got to commit yourself. You got to give yourself to Jesus Christ. Not, 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 just, not just your body, but your mind and soul, your whole total man. You got to be given unto him. It's called for a committed life. Not what you want to do, but you got to live for him. You have to stop living for yourself. That, that when you have, uh, amen, have, have come to Jesus and said that you want him to be your Lord and Savior, then you have to stop living for yourself. But live uh, to spread the gospel. Live every day to do the will of God. Uh, not your will, but God's will must be done. Amen. It also means to deny yourself, to, de to deny your fleshly desire. That's what most of us can't do. It de to deny your fleshly desire. It, it, it come, your fleshly desire comes before anything. But if you're going to follow Jesus, you got to deny your, your total self, Amen. especially your fleshly desire. Yes. Fleshly desire comes up and take over, right. take your attention from spiritual things. Yes. How many of you know about that? Yes. It take over, amen, what you should do for God. But it's what I want to do for my flesh. Yes. It's what I want to do to satisfy myself. I can't think about doing God's will is, is what I want, amen, to do to satisfy myself. Yeah. Well, now, you can't really be a child of God if you just going to think about satisfying yourself. Yeah, yeah but you got to learn to deny yourself. Yeah. It means to give up your desire. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah, yeah for the sake of, of us. Yeah. Amen, to give up, amen, somebody said give up your right for the wrong. In order to live for Jesus, it called for self-denial. Am I right about it? Jesus denied himself for your sins and mine. Didn't he do it? He was on his way up to Calvary. He stopped by a little while. Yeah, and, and asked the disciples, whom do men say I, that I the son of man am? And they said, some say you're Moses, some you're Lyles. Uh, one other other prophet. But he said, whom do you say that I am? You've been walking with me a long time, and I'd like to know what you think about me. Who do you say I am? You've been eating with me. You've been drinking with me. You've been sleeping with me. Do you know who I am? They say, well, some say you're this, and some say you're that. He said, I'm not worried about now what others say about me. I'm, but what do you say about me? And Peter stood up by the Spirit of God and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I heard Jesus say, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto thee, but the Spirit of my Father, which is in heaven. 
You got to allow God's spirit, yeah, to take over your life. But before God's spirit can take over your life, you got to deny yourself. Stop doing everything that you want to do for yourself and deny yourself. Give up something for the sake of the gospel. I'm so glad, I'm so glad. One day, I made up my mind. Yeah, though the storm may rise, winds of confusion may be blowing in my life, but I made up my mind, made up my mind to live for Jesus. Good God Almighty, we get hard sometimes. Yeah, but I made up my mind. In the midst of it, I made up my mind.